Welcome to the What Now Movement Virtual Business Summit. I am Eric Twiggs, your procrastination prevention partner. I'm the author of The Discipline of Now, and I am the host of the 30-Minute Hour Podcast. And I am Dr. Sharon H. Porter, educator, author, publisher, and host of the I Am Dr. Sharon Show. And I am Ted Fells, president and CEO of New Core Vision and also co-host of the 30-Minute Hour Podcast. So let's talk about why we as the founders decided to start this movement. So this pandemic has impacted you. It may have impacted you, your business, changed your business. It may have changed your job situation. It may have changed your situation at home. The question is, what now? That's the question. So we decided to put this movement together with the mission of building high performance entrepreneurs, high performance authors, and career professionals who are ready to deal with life's unexpected curveballs. Because here's the thing, this pandemic will pass, but there is going to be another crisis down the road. And we need to be able to adapt and prepare. And that's really the whole point of this movement. You can see our vision, you can see our mission, and we're aligned on these core values to build, to create, and to innovate. And this is all about community. We wanna form a, a community where we can all collaborate and share these ideas and pool our resources and ultimately equip ourselves, to take it to the next level, and again, to be prepared for those unexpected curveballs. Absolutely, and we have a dynamic lineup for you today. We are packed from 10 until 3 p.m. today. And so we hope that you join us. Um, we're going to kick it off with none other than Ash Shukla. His title session is Becoming a Pandemic Proof Entrepreneur. He will present in between 1015 and 1045. He will be taking your questions at the end of his presentation. You certainly do not want to miss this. And next, we are followed by Matthew Horn. What do you mean you're bored? Write a book. Oh my goodness, author and publisher, Matthew Horn will be giving us some tips on writing and publishing. His session is scheduled from 10.45 until 11.15. Our first panel, we have two dynamic panels today. The first one entitled Adjusting to the New Normal, Business Pivots Panel Discussion. We have business owners, entrepreneurs who have had to adjust and some who have adjusted earlier so that they can make sure that their business sustain. We have husband and wife duo, Antonio and Martina Turner. We also have Marquesa Petway, Gina Young, and Sonia Powers Waddell. So you certainly do not want to miss this panel discussion. It will be from 11.15 to 12.15. Our afternoon lineup does not disappoint. We have presenter Mary Abaday. Her title is How to Advance in Your Job in a New Virtual World. Author, speaker, she's going to let you know how to manage up. Our second panel is mental health, and we know that health is certainly our web. These individuals will come to you, Andrea Lopez, April Lewis, Kim Lamontagne, and Sharon Lawrence on mental health and what we need to do to make sure that we're keeping our mind healthy. Attorney Elsa W. Smith, she's going to present eight tips for estate planning for business owners. I tell you, you know that this is an important topic and you certainly do not want to miss it. We're gonna end up with Ms. Angela Floyd, enrolled agent and partner of Intelligent Tax Solution. Her session is entitled Business and Personal Finance. She's gonna walk us through some dynamic tips on how to keep our business and personal finances above waters. As you've heard, we have an exciting jam-packed day. We're excited about you all being here. 
we want you not only to participate in the, the summit by asking questions uh, during the session and even at the end if you'd like, but we want you to follow us on all of our social media platforms. We have at What Now Movement on Facebook, the What Now Movement in LinkedIn, and at the What Now Movement in Instagram, as well as our uh, website, which is www.thewhatnowmovement.com. We appreciate you all taking this time out to to support uh, to, to join today and to be a part of the movement. So this is the adjusting to the new normal business pivots panel discussion. So we're going to have Sonia Powers Waddell, and she's the owner of Simply Soul Restaurant. We're also going to have Martina Turner. She's a hairstylist and a salon owner. Uh, and we have her husband, Antonio Turner, hairstylist and salon owner as well. We've got Gina Young. She's the principal and CEO of Centric Business Solutions, LLC. And joining us, we've got Marquesa Petway. She is a business reinvention strategist and professional speaker, also known as the Zoom Queen. As we just want to say thank you, first of all, for uh, coming and sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, we know that you have a wealth uh, of knowledge that you're going to share with our viewers. Um, we have different uh, industries represented today, so you're going to touch on a lot. Um, and I'm just going to start out with my questions, and this, is, will, this will be a general question for each one of you. Um, Actually, I want, we shared a little bit about you. If you can just take two minutes um, just to share uh, a little bit about your background, because Eric introduced you and gave us the information that we need to where you are. But Marquesa, can you start and share a little bit about your background? Absolutely. Thank you for having me here, guys. I'm a former associate producer for CNN Business News here in New York City. Uh, which is why I moved here. I had no desire to live in New York. I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. So I don't forget any Texans out there. After four years of being an AP for CNN, I became a sales executive for AT&T. I like three-letter companies. Then in 2004, I got downsized like a lot of folks can relate to. Um, and hopefully this will inspire some folks that may be changing industries right now and decided to become a full-time professional speaker in 2005. And I've spoken on a lot of uh, areas of focus because I worked for a lot of speaker companies, but for the past several years, my specialization has been business reinvention where I create speakerpreneurs. And these are experts that decide you know what in order for me to grow my business i'm going to speak so whether they get paid to speak or they just do it to market and my colleagues within the national speakers association named me 10 years ago the zoom queen because i know more about zoom than most people so you can imagine right now how crazy it is and i'm just excited to be here and i can't wait to talk about how to pivot your business right now Thank you so much, Marquesa. Let's go to Sonia. Uh, Sonia, if you can unmute yourself, please, and we'll come back to Gina. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Hello. If you can please introduce yourself. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sonia Waddell, and I am the owner of Simply Soul Restaurant here in the, well, in the city of Winston-Salem. And of course, you all know restaurants have been affected tremendously and I have definitely had to pivot and I'm looking forward to just sharing my experience um, during this pandemic and I want to thank all the uh, everyone that's on the way on the uh, zoom and everyone that started the what now movement thank you guys so much for allowing or setting a platform for us to have a place to discuss and to help one another so thank you again and I'm Sonia Waddell okay. I'm looking forward to sharing Thank you so much. Okay, we have the Turners, Martina and Antonio Turner. I'm Martina Turner. And I am Tony Turner. And we are Tony Turner Unleashed Hair Care Products and Salon located in Richmond, Virginia. Yes, we are a mom and pop shop. We met together as stylists here in Richmond, Virginia. 
and we've been in the business combined over 60 years. We are now a hair product company that has been in existence for 10 years, and now we are forced to be full-fledged, like Ash said, all in with our hair care products. Yes. And they are awesome. Yes. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear more from you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our panel discussion. Um, if we can just have all cameras on and, um, and be ready to just ch uh, jump in. So I'm going to start out by asking with this pandemic for most people it was mid-march when everything just came down so what was your initial thought of the complete shutdown when states began to say okay we are at a stay-at-home order only essential workers are working i just need to know as a business owner what was your initial thoughts my question we're going to start with you <laughs> I thought, I cannot believe this is happening. Um, and you got to understand, guys, I live in New York City. So there was a point where every eight out of 10 New Yorkers, hello, checked into the hospital or died. So yeah. And my, so my thought was initially just terrified um, in terms of just life and my fellow humans and our country and all those things that come with that. Now, as a professional businesswoman, I knew I would be okay because I do a lot of things virtually, you know, and that's kind of what we're talking about where I, you know, connect with my clients, I hold meetings, I do large presentations. So I knew business-wise that I would be fine, but I was con I'm just concerned about, oh my goodness, what about our country? And I knew I had to protect my mindset and i remember one of the hashtags that i put out was uh when i would share on social media would be choose happy choose happy i can sit up here in fear or i can say i'm gonna be okay i'm just gonna follow the rules do whatever i can protect myself protect others but just be you, you got to choose which way you're going to look at this so that was that was my initial thing and i think that's continued throughout okay Sonia, I'm going to go to you, a well-established restaurant in North Carolina. Um, you are used to your uh, dining area being full, and they stop and say, no dining in restaurants. What was your initial thought as a restaurant owner? Oh, my goodness. And you, you're, you're right. Um, I have a soul food restaurant in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I'm I'm so used to the touching and the, you know, everybody coming in and we, I hug everybody that comes in my restaurant. <laughs> and so it was actually, I'll never forget it. It was on a Monday. I, had, I mean, I had just had full service the day before, Sunday. And the order for our state came that we were on a shutdown. You know, the whole state was on a shutdown, but we could um, just do curbside. Well, my business, 75% of my business is dining in you know as far i get 25 percent will be take out but the majority is dining in and you know the, my first thought was I, I i wanted to just panic I, I just thought lord what is really going on this is this is really happening and you know never going through anything like this fear was my first thought but you know thankfully i'm so grateful um you know my kids, I have two adult kids who help me with my businesses and they have their own other jobs, but they help me in whatever I need. And I'll never forget the conversations that those two young people said to me, literally, when they saw the fear, and I'm trying not to get emotional with the world. <laughs> they said to me, mom, we're going to be okay. We, and this is what they said to help me re, you know, relook at what I already had. They said, we will get through this, these little young people. So it's important to, to look around you. And, but you know, they said, we will be okay. We will figure it out. We've always figured it out. And I said, well, God, thank you for causing me or allowing me to train up some children that in the time of my need, they're able to help me just mentally. And so just my mindset, just like Marquisa said, it was my, my, the fear that hit my, that gripped my mind. But then I had to realize 
I do have, you know, God has already equipped me with something around me. I just had to take a minute, take a breath, take a deep breath and just say, okay, what do you do? There is a what now? What do you do now? And so this, this, this platform, oh my God, this is my life. And so I've had to pivot a lot, but I tell you, God has been so faithful. So I'm, it, that was my first reaction. Yes. Okay. Fear, but I'm better now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And I'm going to go to Tony and Martina. Um, unlike um, the other individuals who've gone, um, they, they like to touch. Your business requires the touch. <laughs> so what was your initial thought when everything was just shut down? And you're still shut down. Yes. Yes. We were like, um, is this a dream? Uh, <laughs> this is like a two months vacation. But a blessing throughout not being able to work in a salon is that we do have these hair care products. So really, the salon was our primary way of making money but now the products is kind of shifting to becoming our primary now so it's kind of a blessing in disguise for us because now we get to work our hair products business more and it's been steady we're thankful Go ahead, babe. Uh, initially uh, I would probably say that I was I was shook because um, being the, the man of this family, we had to figure a way to survive. And like I said, with most businesses, many entrepreneurs, having a uh, disaster fund would probably last you two weeks mm. if you got it. Wow. Yeah. Um, and and to be mandated to be out of work for two months, getting ready to be some more time. Yes. How would we navigate these waters? So that was your initial thought. I can only imagine. Yeah. And Mark, Gina has joined us back. So Gina, you, you're going to do two things. You're going to introduce yourself oh and, then, and then you're going to tell us your initial thought. Okay, I apologize, everyone. Technology, you know, I'm an accountant, so I stay in that lane, but thank you so much for your patience. So um, real quick, uh, worked in corporate America as a CFO and a VP of finance for a number of years and started doing consulting work for family and friends who were starting businesses. And after a number of years, realized that um, those small businesses should have the same benefit as the large corporations scale down in terms of having the expertise, whether it's on the HR side, the accounting side, the tax side, and so decided to start Central Business Solutions uh, to work with startup companies, small and mid-sized companies to really help them scale up and really build out their back offices, if you will. Um, in addition, I am the managing partner for a company called Next One Sports and Entertainment Management Firm. So we work with professional athletes, entertainers, you know, high profile CEOs and the like to help them kind of manage their life um, outside of their day to day. And so um, going through this pandemic, of course, for so many, it hit so many hard. Um, my decision in my company, at least on the centric business solution side, to pivot was um, to just add value more than out of necessity. Whereas a lot of my clients did have to make that major shift um, to really reinvent themselves. And as we know, uh, pivoting has been around for years, just changing your business model, tweaking your business model. It's nothing new, but a lot of companies, a lot of small businesses found themselves um, having to do it out of necessity um, once this happened. Um, once we got over the shock of what was really happening and quickly um, working with clients to make that shift, um, you know, it was, we just had to, had to man up as a woman. We all had to man up and just realize this is the reality that we found ourselves in and try not to ask the question, Lord, why did this happen? It definitely happened for a reason. So um, just really working with clients, helping them to understand how they can reinvent themselves and still sustain 
their businesses and help to add value to new clients and existing clients. Um, so I hope that answered the question. I didn't hear part of it, but um, that's kind of what my initial thoughts were and how my team just kind of all hands on deck kind of got it into gear to really do what we could do to help um, those folks who really needed some assistance during this time. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we've got people that are watching us that they're at that what now moment, right? They may be in restaurants and what have you. So we, we want to hear from you some practical advice that you have for people that may be, we'll start with uh, Marquesa. I know you've got, mm -hmm. I understand you've got three specific ways to pivot. You, can you share that with us? And well, I'm going to say it's Marquesa, right? Yes, thank you. And don't Marquesa. feel bad, everyone does. <laughs> Think of the Contessa. But hey, you can't have a name like that and get offended. So I can appreciate it. Uh, really, I'm going to shock you. It's one major category, which I think is going to be really useful for anyone to pivot right now, especially entrepreneurs who I've renamed into speakerpreneurs. Uh, but there's three ways, one way to do it, and it's called leveraging technology. Mm. Leveraging technology. It is your best friend right now. And believe you me, on another setting, I can take you through exactly how to use my favorite platform called Zoom. But my purpose right now is no matter which platform you're using, just remember three things. One thing is connect. How can I connect with the people that I'm meant to serve? Mm. How can I connect with them? How can I just give them that face to face? We're all in quarantine. We're humans. We're missing each other. So how can I connect? Number two, how can I create some type of experience with them virtually? So think about networking. Think about, you know, breakout sessions. Think about uh, we can play tic-tac-toe. I don't care if you have your own gym and you teach people how to be, how to do yoga. How can you show me that on the camera and give me that yoga type of experience? Ironically, I use that for an example because I don't like yoga. But the point is to make sure that you create that experience. And the third thing is your goal needs to be, how can I transform? In other words, how can I take Dr. Sharon, Gina, Martina, Sonia, Marquesa, Ted, how can I take them from where they are now to where I need them to be during that virtual presentation or that Zoom session or whatever the case may be. So when you approach technology, yeah, it's important to know all the dudes and the dads and all these little things. But if you remember those three things, it will make just about every single virtual co connection you have with someone, it'll put it over the top. Awesome, fantastic advice. So Gina, I'll throw that to you, especially from a financial perspective. What, what advice do you have? Thank you, Eric. And my response is not just the financial, but more global. And so the one thing that I would advise small business owners to do um, in this time, in terms of, we keep hearing that term pivot, um, is to really look at what unmet needs are out there. Um, I'll use an example. I have a couple of clients, um, and Sonia can relate to this, uh, who are restaurateurs. Um, I have another client who's a good friend also who is a caterer, um, has you know been on TV, done all of that. But she found herself in a situation, or they, these clients found themselves in a situation trying to figure out what can I do. A couple of the restaurant owners decided to connect with um, school systems in the area while they were doing the, you know, these restaurants are opening up for delivery or pickup service only. Some of these restaurants have pivoted to kind of come like their own grocery store. They are selling Clorox that they have cases of in the storeroom. They're selling um, their own special sauces and that sort of thing. Um, what these folks did in these restaurants that I'm mentioning, they met with a school systems, Prince George's County here in the area, one school system in New Jersey, and given that we've been hearing all this news about students missing out on meals because they depending, depended on this school day to get fed maybe two meals. So what these folks did was they forged a relationship, started preparing meals for the students and the families and would deliver the meals. And so the school systems paid them for this service. All it is is looking at another way that you can provide a service and even how to expand your bandwidth, expand the services that you're providing. 
uh, from my own um, firm, Centric, uh, we started getting calls from our existing clients, family, friends of clients and others who were trying to, uh, were interested in applying for, we've heard of this SBA, different funding that the government has, uh, something called the Payroll Protection Plan, the PPP. Um, they didn't know what to do. Um, so they called us, can you help us with that? My team got together, made a decision. Yeah, we can help them with that. It's dealing with banks. How can we meet that unmet need for these businesses, these small businesses to help them stay afloat? So I think it's just really looking at what unmet needs are out there. If it's even in your realm, does it make sense? Go for it. We know it's pivoting is risky, but so is going into business and so is doing nothing. So that is my response area. You said something that was profound, and I think people miss this a lot, that doing nothing carries a risk as well. Yes, it does. You know, yes, we think we're does. playing it safe by doing nothing. So Absolutely. thank you for, for bringing that up. Thank so, you. So Sonia, how would you address that? Um, that? That's true, Gina. That's exactly some of the things that I've done. Um, I had to pivot and try to see what needs were needing to be met in my community because, you know, a lot of my customers, again, they were the elderly and they were most of my, the churchgoers that come to my restaurant on Sundays and during the week they get their weekly meals. So when with them not coming into my establishment, the thing that I had to do was to reach out I reached out to the food banks and I reached out to different organizations. And so I have a partner with a lot of nonprofits and we're feeding our community and that's keeping, keeping us working. And um, even though we're, we're not working as much, but it's keeping us relevant. It's keeping us, you know, alive and in business. And it's also helping us give back because we all need something. And so for us to be able to give back during this time, at a cost, really just really basically at a, at a lower cost than we would normally have, but it is still keeping us relevant. So I totally agree that you just gotta figure out what, what needs are in your area and do something, just do something. And I promise it always comes back to you too, because I, I've gained by doing that, by you know meeting the needs of the elderly, we're feeding a few, uh, few hundred families a week through a nonprofit, it's called uh, Love Out Loud in our community. I think it's a nationwide um, organization, but it's Love Out Loud in Winston. And we are feeding any person that's in need of food because our school systems here, they've had, they have been able to you know, feed our community, which has been a blessing. Um, but that was one of my thoughts to reach out to our school system as well. So being able to feed the other part, the other needs in our uh, community has been wonderful and it, uh, that has allowed people to they haven't even been to my restaurant um, to see you know what we do offer now they're even coming on the day that I am open you know after receiving free meals during the week they're coming to support me on the day that I'm operating so it's been a blessing so that those are the kind of things I agree with what both of you guys said I'm, I'm learning a lot in the technology area my kids are being helpful because again I like I said uh, before I'm not the one to be out here talking a lot I'm more of a doer and whatever I can do but I, I learned I'm learning you've got to pivot and you got to do what things you need to do to keep you relevant and so I'm learning to use the different platforms Facebook Instagram and all those things those are my te technical platforms that I use um, just to keep simply so you know relevant so those are the things that I'm doing Awesome, thank you for sharing that. So, so next, you. we wanna hear from the Turners, same question. With our business, we had to move from being a business of touch to a business of delivery. So it was a big transition and mainly because we are so personable with our clients. And with this pandemic, it's about staying alive as well as becoming financially sound. So with us, I would admonish anyone developing a business yes. to definitely get an online presence. Because if you're not able to be 
close to your clients, how else are you going to serve them? And we had already been doing things in the community as far as feeding kids who weren't getting meals because we linked with a church in the area yes. and we sold seed to get those kids meals. And this happened before the, the pandemic. Damn it. We had no idea that we was going to be needing those food can those foods <laughs> for ourselves later. But the 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 hair industry or the hair product industry is a huge multi-billion dollar industry. There's so many different niches. And the more I study, the larger companies, your L'Oreal's and um, Procter and Gamble and all these huge companies now have had to become small. And what I mean by that is we're doing just what they're doing. And that means that we're in a kitchen and the execs are sharing their worries and concerns. They're studying the market it being so pivotal. They're trying to get their minds straight as to where they're going to be investing their dollars. A lot of it is direct to the consumer. We definitely be doing a lot of social media. Uh, so social media, yes. we banging, banging social media. Um, all platforms. For us, it is more Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. And then you have to incorporate YouTube. Your website. In order to push people to the website. Already, we know that our products are awesome because we're hairstyles. And then that being said, our products have to work. They had to work before this because that's how we ate. So now we have to share our talent and our products with our customers. So this becomes share the other part. Share knowledge as well. Mm -hmm. It's now you have to get focused on distributing and shipping. Now you have to look at the cost of shipping product and understanding how that's going to take away from your bottom line. Awesome. Now that that's that's certainly great advice. So let, let let's shift gears a bit because here's a question that's out there. You know, there there are people out there that are watching us right now. They feel led to start a business. They feel led to be a full time entrepreneur, but they're looking at these times and saying, "Oh, it's so uncertain." I know I want to start my own business. So I want to hear from each of you, starting with Mar Marquesa. That's what like advice do you have for those people that are thinking of starting a business, but they're uncertain, that they have this fear of the future? Well, one thing I would think about is, I always say this to my clients, look at your lowest hanging fruit. What is it that you know right now? What is it that you are always asked about? the advice. Can you help me organize my place? Can you help me manage my children? Can you help me in my love life? What are those questions that you're constantly asked over and over again? And figure out how can I leverage technology and answer those questions and make money doing it? So I would start with your lowest hanging fruit and then think about how can I serve? How can I help? And that's really in the expert speaking, coaching, training, consulting realm, but it can be in anything. There are folks out there that, again, I'm listening to financial experts. I love financial experts because I am terrible at it. I love making money, but managing it is a whole nother thing. So I would love for a Gina or somebody like that to decide, you know what? I know your number one question is X, you know, uh, and then she does a, 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 maybe a Zoom series just on this is what you should do with your money. You know what I mean? So maybe she can't see people in person, but she can help them virtually. 
So start with your lowest hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. All right, great advice. Okay, Gina? Um, I definitely uh, echo the sentiments of Marquesa. Um, I think, yeah, definitely that. I think starting with your network, your family, your friends, looking at what you like to do, not just what you are capable of doing, what did you get your college degree in, what do you have a love for? It may be baking, it may be making, you know, at working as a seamstress, look at those things. Um, now is the best time ever. There's going to be such a tr huge transfer of wealth and knowledge during this time because number one, we've had a chance to slow down and really think. Um, but when you think about on the other side of this pandemic, the opportunities that will be available, um, information technology, um, people are going to be looking at different ways of doing what they do. So if there was ever a time to really, really consider going into business and becoming that entrepreneur, I dare say now is the time. Fantastic. Okay, Sonia? Okay. Um, I, I echo what those two ladies said. Um, and I would, um, I agree. This is a grand time to really think about getting in business. Um, when I started, I, I'm grateful that the way that I started my business um, would be the same recommendation that I would give a new entrepreneur today. I looked at what I love to do every day and what I was already doing. So cooking and serving, that's what I love to do. And so, and of course, I, as a kid, I did it with my mom all my life. That's what we did. We served people. And so, of course, that was my low hanging fruit. And everybody looked to us to do that in our community, in our um and our family and so with us starting our business that was one of the things we did but i also asked the question like i always teach my kids are you willing to count up the entire cost you need to count up the entire cost even though opportunity is available out here during this pandemic i have i'm so grateful that i counted up the cost because i i've never applied for gratefully thankfully i never had to rely on loans and so even though I've reached out to apply for the different things that are available to me, um, I didn't have to rely on those during this, during the first few months of this pandemic. However, it was still because I was able to, things are, you're going to have a rainy day. So you've got to prepare for those times because you may not have it for eight years. I've been in business for eight years. I didn't have a real bad rainy day until my eighth year my eighth year but i'm so grateful that i i knew it was going to come eventually so you have to that was that's one thing i would say to anybody starting make sure you plan for a rainy day because whether it ever comes at least you're teaching the people that's in business with you or your family you you, you prepare yourself because things are gonna things happen and so being in business you gotta be prepared for something happening and so you need to be able to be willing to count up that cost and prepare yourself but don't don't stop don't do nothing still pursue that dream because it's worth it even through the rainy days so that's what i would say that's awesome and you know they call it a rainy day fun because yeah. at some point it's going to rain it's right? gonna we, rain we need we to have, rain we, we have to recognize that and be prepared and that's really what be this prepared. movement is all about so let's the turners what 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 do you have to say on this uh, well, I, i'm gonna say it like this if you're going to start a business, especially in a pandemic, you better learn how to pray. Yeah, definitely got to keep um, God first. I know we're talking about money. Yeah. And some people focus on money so much, they drive them crazy. But for us in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have no loans. And we've been out of work for two months. I got favor of God on my side. He touched folks' hearts. He put places and things and resources yes. that we did not have and put them in play for us. Definitely. Um, so you can count up the cost every which way you want to. But if you starting with zero, you better have the Lord on your side. Mm. And that's how we're going to make it. 
And I can almost put a T on that because I'm living it. And we make it. Yes. So when everything hit the fan and you ain't got nothing to stand on, you might be reaching for your last piece of air. You better call on them. And that's how we get through this. Awesome. That, that is that is great advice. So, so the next question I have is, I find that there's always opportunity in a crisis. So I want to know from each of you, like what's one positive habit that you picked up during this crisis that you look back and say, you know what? I should be doing that anyway. I should have been doing that all along. All right. So, so we'll go to Marquesa. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Sharon. <laughs> this has become fun. This has become fun. Don't worry about it. I love it. I love it. Marquesa, I do. Marquesa. Am I saying Kessa? Mar. Let, let me do it. Marquesa. Marquesa. There you go. There you go. All right. Marquesa. All right, Eric. No. <laughs> All right. So one habit that I have, and I'm a person of habits, good and bad, but I'm certainly um, learning to master my best ones. Um, I'm a 12 week year student. You guys got to get that New York Times bestseller book. It is amazing. And one of the principles I learned from this book is really to stop looking at your year in 12 months and instead look at it in 12 weeks. And it's not a quarter we talking about, but it's literally with these 12 weeks, what must be done. So instead of the normal of, oh, I got like 50 priorities. Come on, I know I'm not the only one who on here have like a lot of priorities. And then you feel angry because you're thinking, but I, I couldn't get any of them done because you tried to do a little bit of everything. So now I'm really forcing myself to narrow down what must be done the next three weeks. And then putting myself in a position with accountability buddies, with my mastermind, with uh, just certain commitments I make to my clients, um, exactly how am I going to do it? So I am really like taking my time management to a whole nother level. And I must say, this has probably been the most productive. And I really didn't have a choice because my business has shifted so much. So maybe that's a different question, but I'll tell you, just really uh, being protective of my time with myself. Awesome. No, I, I think that 12 week, 12 week planning is huge. So well, Gina? Yep. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with my sister. I mean, this time requiring and just making us, you know, I say sometimes to people that, you know, um, God will make us slow down sometimes when we don't have the sense to do it ourselves. And I truly feel that this is that opportunity. And I agree. Um, time management, you know, um, having all these to do lists and you take off five things and add 10 and just again, as Marquesa said, just being more protective of time, paying more attention to time. And for me, because I'm a workaholic, learning when to just take a step back and mm -hmm. just take time for myself because I'll push myself and push myself, um, but just really pushing back sometimes and say, you know what, that can wait until tomorrow or that can wait until next week. So yeah, I think I'm gonna take on, I'm gonna read that book and take on that, that whole concept of 12 weeks and kind of, segmenting that out, but I agree. Just really doing better with time management. Great, great. Sonia? I, again, I agree with the ladies. Um, I have a new grandbaby and I was just thinking the other day, you know, if I was operating at 100% my restaurant, I would have missed him crawling. I would have missed him just reaching out for me when I walked in the room. I'm like, oh my God. So, you know, I, I took a look at, you know, I have a, I have also have a, another business. It's called Simply Living. It's a family care home. And one day I was just, you know, thinking during this time, why do you use the brand Simply? You have not taken the time to just simply relax and time management. Oh my God. So I'm, li I'm becoming true to my brand. Simply relax, enjoy life and really see what's important. And I agree with really everybody that's on this panel. If you do not simplify your life and really realize what your, who your true source is, which is for me is, is God. And if I, you know, just realize that he will take care of you. We, 
the saying that the government's using, we will all get through this together, is making us realize we do need each other. And you just need to simply, like, I need you guys. I needed this. And so I'm learning to really, you know, just take a deep breath and just realize the time that I'm in and just simplify my life. It's been a beautiful thing. And so even though it's hard on one end, it's simple on the other. And so I want to really just simplify my life and just, I hope I can enjoy more time just for me and my family um, and still survive financially. But you know, God will show me how to do that. So just really time management is the key. Awesome. All right. Yeah, just been hearing some 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 great questions and great responses from our, uh, you know, from our from our esteemed panelists. Uh, situations like this require us to to innovate, right? You hear the term. You hear the term innovation. What does innovation mean to each of you, and how have you had to to innovate? And Marquesa, I'll start with you because I want everyone to know that one of us will be able to say your name correctly. Marquesa. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> so ask me that question again, Zay. I got thrown off a little bit there. <laughs> so I was saying that, you know, times like this require us to, to innovate. You, oh, you hear yes. that term all the time about mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. What does innovation mean to you and, and, and how you had to innovate during this uh, time in order to pivot? Well, here's the thing, guys. That's sort of my first name. I know we've played with my first name, Marquesa, <laughs> but technically is Innovate. That's just, that's sort of how I'm wired. But to your point, um, you know, I have this business and I create speakerpreneurs and I help them create that solid income stream virtually. And a part of my teachings, of course, is on using Zoom and leveraging Zoom. What shocked me is during this whole thing, Zoom became like the new FaceTime, it became everybody's world. Initially, it was just for the, you know, entrepreneurs mainly. That's why all those security things start happening because they weren't expecting that to happen. So because of that and me being a Zoom administrator, no, I do not work for Zoom. I just have a high end license and, um, and I know a lot about it. So in terms of innovation, I went from one way that I taught people how to leverage Zoom to like eight. And so some of my B2Bs, these would be, because uh, I work with entrepreneurs mainly, but I spend about 20% of my time working for just businesses and, and associations. So for example, a 300 uh, member association decided, all right, they want to do everything virtual. So now they're calling me, can you design it? Can you help us make it work? Can you bring energy to it? Blah, blah, blah. So my, my suggestion to all everyone that's listening what is it that you have right now, kind of back to that lowest hanging fruit that you can just take to the next level and make it unique and make it fit what's, what people need right now? Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you for that. Uh, Sonia, how have you, uh, what are your thoughts on innovation and how have you had to innovate within your organization? Well, uh, thank you for the question, sir. Um, I would say, I, well, you know, I think I've just taken on this, my innovation has been my new normal. What is my new normal? I've, I've actually been saying it for the last few years, but um, I think what I've, what I've done is, again, try to simplify. I think I've been doing so much that I haven't really focused. So my, and it's been good to, you know, do so much, but sometimes you just need to slow down and find the one thing and then master it. And so even though you do that in the beginning, you, you, you try to figure out, you know, what is this going to work? Is that going to work? So what I'm, I'm, I'm doing now, my new normal, is to just simplify my processes. And a, a lot of my processes is just really like uh, Mar Marquesa said, you know, <laughs> my low-hanging fruit. My people love, my, my, in my restaurant business, they love the fact that they can have a family meal. And I actually found that out by serving the community. You know, not so much in my day-to-day -day before. I mean, they're wanting family meals. But, you know, I'm thinking, really? You want a family meal? But that's my new normal. And so I'm learning to, to, to do that, to provide those things. And it's actually causing me to simplify my life because they're getting it in bulk now. They'll buy a meal for 
on Sunday enough to last them through the week. And that only not only simplifies their life, it's helped me to be able to, y'all gonna hear this probably the whole time, to enjoy my grandbaby. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a, it's been a blessing this I, I i've shared with so many people that this pandemic there's a silver lining there is a silver lining it has caused us to slow down it's it it's it's real now i'm not don't please don't misunderstand me i have been affected but i i promise you i just thank god that I'm learning to find the good we we sometimes we get so busy we we too busy we can't see the good and and one of the other things i'll say this and i'll be quiet <laughs> so when you get me started it's gonna <laughs> um one of the silver linings is for me i never wanted to rely on assistance but now as far as you know that's why i didn't get along it wasn't that i didn't want that i didn't apply i just never wanted to rely on somebody else telling me what to do when i got to do it because what i took away from the sba which I'm applying for now and thankfully I'm in the process of being approved for some of those funds because it's that's truly who it's for um, that um, what I'm realizing is that uh, that when God opens up doors for you you do need to tap into those things he's leveraging the playing field for all of us and I, I'm learning you know there's a time for everything and just be wise in what you do you know but then take this silver lining and just ask God to show you how to keep, again, keep things simple. No, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Gina, I'd like to ask you the, the same question. Again, innovation, what does it mean to you and, and how have you applied? Um, how have you innovated? And, and again, everyone, uh, just like uh, Sonia just mentioned, it's not necessarily technology. Mm -hmm. It's really it can be how you deal with people, your processes or technology or a combination of the three. It's just a situation that you've looked at and there's there's been a need for change and how you how you've adjusted in order to uh to be able to better service your clients no that's a great question ted i appreciate that so innovation to me means all of that and that you mentioned technology re-engineering processes all of that and so we have all had to innovate whether it's the the stay-at-home mom with the kids and how she's going to make ends meet or the business the small business so innovation for me, kind of going back to that, that, that phrase, process re-engineering. I've looked at our internal processes with Centric. How can we do things differently and better? Um, we have worked with our clients to help them to innovate and to reconsider and to revamp their processes. Because as we know, even the federal government, they were not expecting this. So a lot of them were talking about putting systems in place to be able to work remotely or to do some of these other things, they weren't ready for it. So a lot of us have been blindsided by this. And so looking at technology, looking at how we've done things internally and working with our clients to look at those things, um, how they can do things stronger, faster, better um, in their respective businesses. Um, even the large companies like um, Brooks Brothers, um nike they've had to consider innovation in a different way they've had to reprocess or look at reprocessing um reassessing how they do their their internal um business nike for example they went from making just tennis shoes and t-shirts and sportswear to actually making masks to actually making you know a gowns that the doctors and the nurses people on the front line can wear when they're you know providing services um, something that has amazed me in terms of process re-engineering or innovation um, is wineries. They're now making hand sanitizer. And so these things are not going away. They are here to stay. So I think um, we have found a number of creative ways to innovate. We found a number of creative ways to uh, look at how we can uh, re-engineer our processes. And so it's here for the long haul. So if people are not with it, they better get on board because they're going to have to do a lot of that going forward. No, thank, thank you. Thank you for that, Gina. You made a, a great uh, point there of not just the innovation within your organization, but how you have assisted uh, in each of you have assisted your, your customers in, in innovating their own processes. So that's some real value there. And, and lastly, uh, the turn is if, uh, again, your thoughts on 
innovation, what it means to you and areas that you may have innovated within your business? Uh, for me, I would have to say I've become more of a social media person. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I would let my husband do most of it, but I'm enjoying it. I'm reaching out, doing more advertisement, marketing, being more creative. Uh, as for my clients and what's next, I would have to say as for females, being a stylist, uh, your clients are missing getting their hair done. That's a sensitive situation for women. So with us, I have, we've been doing posts talking about the products, how they work. Also, even dealing with BNP Magazine has been a blessing to write because I did an article talking about let's get back to healthy hair. So this can kind of help those at home, how to manage their hair, use the products, find the different techniques, as well as the proper tools to use your hair. And right now, I guess for us, it's just marketing, helping people understand how to use the products and just growing. And also being a blessing, sometimes just sharing a good word with your clients throughout this hard time. Some people are alone. Some people need a good word to be inspired. And even if it's just sharing a prayer. So it's been a great opportunity for us during this time to really get us to slow down, look at where we're planning to go in the future, and really giving us a big opportunity to get this hair care business growing. And this Thank may end up being our future, where it is a future. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Doc Dr. Sharon? Absolutely. Absolutely, guys. So this is the time where you, our audience, we have five minutes left on this wonderful panel. Uh, while we're looking for questions, we're going to now take the time for you guys to just share your contact information. We see in the chat people wanting to know, how can I get in contact with you? My question, if you would please start with how can individuals reach you? Absolutely. First of all, thank you guys for this. I just love when we come together as humans and we make the world a better place. So I appreciate this. And if I can help you guys with leveraging Zoom. Now, if you just want to go on Zoom and, and play, I may not be your girl, but if you want to go on Zoom and make some money and uh, really use it in such a way where you transform others, then please go to zoomlikeaboss.com. That is zoomlikeaboss.com. I'm actually in the middle of a series right now on how to Zoom strategically, and it is going awesome, if I must say so myself, but there's still five sessions left, so you can come in and get access to the others. Here's something else, too. Um, if you want my Zoom cheat sheet, let's say you're like, what should I know about Zoom? What are those little tricks that you can share with me? Again, go to zoomlikeaboss.com, page all the way down. You'll see something that says, give me my cheat sheet, and just download there. And the final thing I would say is right here on Facebook, if you go to zoom to grow.com, actually you can do that off Facebook and it will bring you into my really popular Facebook group where it's nothing but zoom stars in there. And we share tricks and tips and we'll reach out and say, Hey, I need an expert in this area. I need someone who can do that area. Guys, business is booming. People need this really bad. So if you're thinking I want to do it for my clients, but I also want to, you know, get some zoom producing skills under my belt it would be worth it. So two things, zoomlikeaboss.com and then zoomtogrow.com. Thank you so much. Uh, the Turners, where can individuals reach you and where can they buy your products? Uh, www.tonyturnerunleashed with ed.com. That's our website. You can also check us out at Tony Turner Unleashed on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Check out our tutorials. Awesome. Ms. Gina Young. Yes, the website for Centric Business Solutions is Centric, C E N T is in Tom, R I C, Biz, B I Z, Solutions with an S on the end, dot com. Again, that's Centric Biz Solutions dot com. Thank you. Sonia Waddell, um, where can people reach you and the address for your restaurant? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will be reaching out to all of you ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking forward to sharing with you all. Now you can reach me, reach me on Instagram at Simply Soul WSNC on Instagram. And then you can also um, reach me on Facebook, Simply Soul. 
I think it's just Simply Soul on Facebook. And um, of course, you can reach me personally at Sonya Powers Waddell. Um, and I'll be glad to share any, anything that I have regarding Simply Soul. Now, my restaurant is located um, 4339. South Main Street in the lovely city of Winston-Salem. And we're looking to grow. Um, we're actually in plans of growing. And I'm also just listening to you guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing some stuff online. So <laughs> I'll be looking at, looking, um, looking to you guys for your help. And my phone number, as you can see, I did think about wearing my shirt today. So you can reach me at, my, at the business at the um, restaurant on Sundays only right now. We're at the phone number is 336-788-0400. And if my other business is a, a family care home, it's called Simply Living Family Care Home. Um, we don't have all the media up yet because we just started the business. Uh, we're, uh, we have clients, but we're kind of, kind of just holding steady right now during the pandemic. But um, Simply Living is my other business. And I thank you guys, the What Now Movement, for allowing the Simply Brand being a part of this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your vision. And just thank you for allowing us to be a part. Uh, on behalf of Eric and Ted, this panel was dynamic. Marquesa Petway, Antonio, and Martina Turner, Sonia Powers-Wydell, and Gina Young. We want to say thank you.